All right. So Chris, you just saw a documentary last night. Tell me what the name of the documentary was. <sighs> it's called Bikram. <laughs> yeah. I, and there was the, 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 the under like the byline said like yoga guru predator. And I was like, huh, that's a good tagline. <laughs> so let's, I guess, before I get into, if you haven't watched it, it's on Netflix. It's a documentary. It's all about Bikram Chowdhury, uh, who brought Bikram yoga right now, like hot yoga. We teach hot yoga. We were kind of born into that world. He was one of the originators of hot yoga. So let me give it a little, little yeah, story about that. So he, uh, so he um, was teaching, uh, his teacher, Vishnu Ghosh, uh, he taught him how to teach, taught Bikram how to teach yoga. Um, this was uh, Calcutta, India. Um, and it's hot. It's hot and humid. And uh, and the style that they taught was uh, was done in a way, was done, I mean, it, it was done in a way that uh, that would make you sweat. And, but the temperature was there already. Um, now, uh, Bikram moved to Japan to help, uh, to help teach there. And what he realized is that the temperature was cold. Right, it was a lot colder than it was in Calcutta, India. So his solution was to put heater heaters in the room, right? And so he created uh, the same environment that he came from when he taught, right? So um, later on, right, he he realized that he, that was really helpful for for the style and what he uh, and 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 the results he was trying to get for people. And so he continued to heat up the rooms and put heaters in the rooms. Uh, he moved from Japan and eventually ended up in uh, in Hollywood, California, and uh, continued to teach that his the, that style of yoga done in a heated environment. Uh, and uh, and so he he was one of the originators of hot yoga, bringing uh, bringing uh, bringing that style in uh, to the United States. Yeah. So we you know, one of his students was a man named Jimmy Barkin, uh, who was in California at the time, um, like trying to get his uh, foothold into the acting world. And he was a singer and he was a super talented guy, uh, but he found Bikram and then started training like intensely. He actually said he and uh, Paul Grilly were in like, like in the beginning, like, like friends who were taking three and four classes. They were hardcore day, back in the day. Hardcore right. back in the day. And this is like Bikram who will like kick the shit out of you and yell at you and like bark at you and, uh, which I guess I understand why a lot of Bikram teachers do that because that's where they learned it from. So but anyway, Jimmy was one of his senior, ended up being one of his senior teachers and he studied with him for 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. And he opened up a yoga studio in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Well, right about the time we started getting into hot yoga, they had a falling out and Jimmy was like, all right, I'm doing my own teacher training. John went to the very first uh, Jimmy Barkin, uh, Barkin method teacher training. I went to the second one. I think he did two that year. Mm -hmm. And then we immediately both went back to the level two training. And so we were like, that was our like birth into the hot yoga world was via Jimmy Barkin, who had changed the sequence already. Uh, he was this, just the sweetheart of a dude, crazy knowledgeable about that sequence and the information. Phenomenal and teacher. Just phenomenal teacher. Like we were so blessed to have like been born like has, with him as our teacher. Um, so that was that's our history. That's why. And so right now, uh, our studios, we teach hot yoga, right? We teach hot yoga in the hot yoga method that we learned from Jimmy Barkin, which has evolved over time. We've changed the methodology and we've changed the sequence uh, to align with what we believe to be like maybe perhaps the the best form of movement within that hot sequence. Um, and then we also teach flow, but all of it's heated. Um, so when I look back at the lineage, like Bikram is part of it which I feel like now I have to take a shower <laughs> so, because I feel dirty about so being a part of that lineage. Let's get back to this documentary. And uh, so what, uh, give us the Cliff Notes version of the documentary, Chris. Well, I guess first to his credit, like he brought over a sequence that's crazy powerful, but it wasn't his sequence. It was the sequence that he learned from Bishnu Ghosh. Like, in fact, there's a pamphlet that called like Ghosh College of India booklet. And in that are the 26 postures and two breathing exercises. So it wasn't really his to begin with. It was what he learned from his guru, from Bishnu Ghosh. That's first. But so uh, my point is like, okay, so he's, he's impacted people in really great ways by giving the West this amazing sequence. Uh, we're a part of, we're a part of that, which again, makes me feel dirty. Um, but 
what and the reason why is because and well you we use Bikram and I was just like in furious last night. But it's the problem in the world of yoga that it's always been the problem or really any time you are placing yourself in a position of power because of what you teach, you then have a higher responsibility to be ethical and to be a good human being. And so the gist of the documentary was, you know, he started drinking his own Kool-Aid and thinking that he was actually a guru. And he then, you know, as the Bikram sequence po like became more popularized, um, as a business model, it makes a lot of sense. So like he, you, he created a franchise and the only per people who could open up a Bikram yoga studio were people who went through his teacher training. So all of a sudden his teacher training started exploding and getting like three, four, 500 people in them. And he, here he was literally elevating himself on this pedestal uh, in his speedo. Like no judgment of that, that's your thing, whatever. But he then started using his position of power as a sexual predator, period. Like he's, he was sexually assaulting and raped. This is like allegedly because he's never been brought to, um, brought back from, he's now in exile out of the United States because he's a fugitive here. Uh, for civil reasons, he lost a lawsuit uh, and was uh, the, the plaintiff was awarded like seven plus million, which he hasn't paid a dime of because he immediately fled and went to Europe, went to India, and I think has landed in at least uh, in Acapulco or somewhere in Mexico at this point. I think he went to Thailand, actually. Anyway, watch the documentary. You'll see all the details of it. <clears throat> but what like what pains me is that he's never been brought to court under a criminal suit for what he's done to those women. And it's multiple, multiple, multiple women who have come forward and said, listen, I was sexually assaulted and a few of them were raped by him. And this is like, so I have two young children and I'm like, it's so fucking unacceptable when you, and this is my point. This is like the bigger point of this whole thing is like when you put yourself in guru status and, and not even guru status, but like when you're a yoga teacher and you're walking in, into a yoga room and you're teaching people through postures and you're and you're giving them information on like the spiritual realm of like how to live a more skillful life, immediately they put you on a pedestal and they look at you like you have the answers and then you become the way. And if you take that that level of power and the pedestal that you put that they've put you on and then you've raised it up without any humility and the recognition that it's not you like they are mistaking you for the message you're the you, signpost yes you are the conduit you are the 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 channel through which messages flow you are not the way the way is the message now so what pisses me off is because this has been prevalent in the yoga world right from john friend in the Anusara world to Amrit Desai. Amrit Desai, like preaching celibacy as he's sleeping with all of his disciples. Uh, I mean, it's even in the, the like recently came out in the Shambhala um, side of Buddhism, mm -hmm. right? The, the, high, the highest up was uh, sexually assaulting and ra raping women. I mean, like, are you not to mention the Catholic Church. Oh my God, don't even get me started. It's, it's insane. Now, the, the definition of guru is the speller of darkness right? Not promoter of darkness. And this is what we're seeing over and over and over again with, with these, these yoga teachers that have cre that have gained fame. Their essential teaching is powerful, right? It's, it's changing lives. It's helping people. But what happens is some switch, some shift where they mistake themselves for the message. They mistake themselves for being the power when what they're doing is showing people the way to their personal power, right? This shift happens and it uh, it causes people to do just craziness. Crazy, it's, it's absolute insanity, absolute insanity. And uh, yeah, what else? Like, so you know, give <laughs> so what, what pains me now is this all came out like prior to, I think it was like 2000, between 2015 and 2017. So in 2017, the judgment against him in the civil court was like, it did not go in his favor, right? He was like, he, he lost and was uh, like forced to pay all this money and he fled, right? So he fled and now he's living wherever he's living. And he's, th this is, this is what gets me. He's still doing teacher trainings. He's still in a position of power. And there are studios still sending their students, their, their 
women to be students of this sexual predator. Like, what the fuck? Like, why is, why, like, state of California, district attorney of California, why aren't you like filing a criminal lawsuit based on all of the evidence that you have already, all the evidence that is admissible from the civil trial in the criminal trial and, and extraditing him from wherever he is back to the United States so that he can stand on trial for his crimes. He is it, like, he's, he has access to women and young and girls who are looking at him like he's a guru and he's, I know in his heart he deserves love like we all do. And like it's part of like I, I can see like I can spiritualize this any way I'd like to to like let like I know he is one with source as I was and he is deserving of love in the next life. Okay. Like I've like now in this life, keep him away from any women and keep him from ever doing another teacher training ever again. Yeah. That is how I feel about it. That's why I'm pissed off because he's still able to do the things that to, to women, he still has like lock them up. Lock him up. Yeah, he should be in prison. He should be in prison. Allegedly uh, doing for <laughs> allegedly doing what what he's done. He should. Yeah, yeah allegedly. Again, <laughs> he is innocent until proven guilty. And so this is my opinion. None of it is fact. Uh, but watch the documentary. It's very enlightening. So let me take this. Let me take this uh, back to uh, your original message with this, Chris, is that when you study a way, when you study a contemplative practice, when you get into yoga, when you take teacher training, when you get into something that allows you to connect with a deeper part of yourself, it is not the person that's doing that, right? The person, the guru, the teacher, whoever that is, is simply a signpost, is simply a channel. They are simply helping you to see what's already inside you, right? They are not the way you have the way inside of you. And that is the key. And so whatever path you're taking that helps you wake up, that helps you live a better life, uh, uh, know that it's already inside you. You may need to hear that message. You need to need to follow those teachings. You need to do the practice, do it, whatever it is that you do to get that. But it is not the person that's giving that to you. They are showing you the way that's helping to open that up within you. And if you are teaching and doing teacher trainings and you they are elevating you to a status please recognize it's not you. When they say thank you for everything you've done for them, recognize you as like yourself as the channel through which that information is flowing and don't let it go to your head and give you this inflated sense of self. Like feel good and fulfilled by at the service that you're doing, but don't take it to that level of like the, of inappropriateness and, and being unethical and like, or just self-aggrandizing. It's not the, that's not why we're doing it. It is a byproduct of people recognizing that you're teaching them a way of being that they maybe have never heard of. And it's changing their lives dramatically. It's giving them a quality of life that they've never experienced before. And it's not you. It's the information. It's the message. It's exactly what John said. Yeah. And if you keep like humility and you recognize that it's source flowing through you and it's not, you're just a conduit. You're just a channel through which that information is flowing. It will help keep your head level and keep you on the ground and not allow you to start believing like whatever has to be believed that produces what we've seen in the yoga world over the years between all the guys that we've already mentioned. Interesting. They're all men pieces of shit. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So do the work, honor the struggle and please make the world a better place to live. Please, 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 please. Yes. Thanks so much for listening to Yoga Entrepreneur Secrets. Do you have a question that you'd like us to answer raw and uncut on the podcast? If you want your questions answered, all you need to do is head over to Apple Podcasts and do three simple things. One, rate and review telling us what you think of the podcast. Two, in that review, ask anything you want related to yoga. And three, if you want a shout out, leave your Instagram handle or name. And that's it. Then listen in to hear your question answered live, raw and uncut. Join us next time on Yoga Entrepreneur Secrets Podcast.